Hi everyone, my name's Mark English and I'm here to talk about the Netflix series Ancient Apocalypse presented by Graham Hancock based on his own research and work. Um, now Graham can be quite a controversial figure. Anyone who saw his banned TED talk uh, now on YouTube, uh, the war on consciousness um, will detest to that, which I personally find absolutely amazing that consciousness is non-local, which I think it isn't. Um, and also people like Rupert Sheldrake also talking about morphic resonance. You know, that was also a banned TED talk. So these people just are, are sort of free thinkers outside the normal realm of understanding, which I think we need a little bit more of. You know, um, there's nothing wrong with having free ideas, OK, and radical thought. I think it's very, very important. If you think back, Galileo, that was quite a controversial opinion. You mean the Earth goes around the sun? Now, in this Netflix series, which dropped back in November 2022, Graham Hancock, um, he had the theory that he said a developed civilization of humans existed on Earth up until the last ice age, so we're talking 12, 13, 12,000 years ago, and were died out. And that survivors of that ancient civilization went round uh, culturing and maybe re trying to rebuild society by integrating with other human beings who were left over. Um, when he says an advanced civilization, we're not talking rockets to the moon or anything like that. I mean, if you think back in the ancient times, China was a very advanced civilization as opposed to the Western area. Um, so, yes, he, he's saying that there maybe was uh, these group of people who went around interacting with other civilizations, making them build these incredible um, ancient sites, um, which were much older than people think they are. Now, this is all around the Younger Dryas period, where it started, the last ice age started to melt away, warmer weather, weather was coming in. But we had this, what he says, an apocalyptic event happen. Now, he talks about a great flood. Um, it could have been caused by a meteorite. We don't know. Um, but there is, there is scientific evidence, of course, that there was, at uh, the Younger Dryas period, there was a, a, an event where the ice sheet started to fall back and warmer weather started coming in. And it's around this time that some of these structures started to be built. The most famous one, of course, is Go Gebekli Tepe, which is 12,000 years old. And it's been dated to 12,000 years old. Um, an absolutely incredible um, structure. Uh, I'd love to go there, actually. love to go there. And if you've seen some of Graham's conversations on the Joe Rogan podcast, um, also on London Real with Brian Rose, absolutely fascinating. And it's good to have people interviewed who do think outside of the box. You know, I, I like to think I think outside of the box. Um, but in doing so, you get all the crap from people. I mean, he's been treated disgracefully by uh, a lot of people. Some really nasty comments, um, which is totally undeserved. You know, he doesn't claim to be an archaeologist. He doesn't claim to be a historian. He's an investigative journalist. And he's been doing this for over 30 years. It's not something new. His great book, uh, Fingerprints of the Gods, came out in 1995. And a fascinating read. You know, I do think places are older than they say they are. What I find interesting that uh, Graham suggests is that the ancients and these ancient civilization were very much involved in psychedelics and plant medicine, like ayahuasca, um, and I think so too. That's maybe how we got these, these altered states of consciousness, which um, is absolutely fascinating. You know, we're all stuck in this little three-dimensional world. You know, we're only seeing perception of what our reality is around us immediately. But we're at the lowest vibration, absolute lowest vibration. So what exists on a higher vibration, which can be accessed by DMT, um, which we have a little bit of in our in our bodies, but not enough to trigger hallucinogenic trips. Um, well, trips, I think, is the wrong word. Um, that's why I like to call it plant medicine. Um, although lots of authorities in countries around the world, it's classed as a class A drug, um, which I think is disgraceful. You know, I think a lot of world leaders, if they had some DMT, they might be a more, more beautiful world to live in. So could this ancient civilization, the shaman, introduce these mind-altering psychedelics and hallucinogenics into the populace, into these people they meet, other civilizations, other tribes, to make them sort of expand their awareness. I've always found it quite difficult to accept that, I don't know what I'm saying, I'm not, a, I'm not an archaeologist or a historian, but I read both sides, and I'm fascinated by archaeology and history, by the way, as you can see from my other videos, I'm always going around old churches and things like that, um, that suddenly, just like, what, 5,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, everyone stopped being hunter-gatherers and suddenly all came together and started living in communities across the world. You know, human beings, modern human beings, Homo sapiens, we've been around, what, 150, 200,000 years as modern Homo sapiens? So what was that trigger? You know, um, 5,000 years ago, if you want to go with the accepted text, to, to where people stopped being hunter-gatherers, bomb straight into civilization. you know, with Mesopotamia and places like that. 
And why is there no trait of this ancient civilization? Um, as Graham said, and I said earlier, he said we're a species of amnesia. Now, whether you agree with Graham or not, I agree with a lot of things he said. I think he had some quite compelling evidence, as far as I'm concerned. You may not agree. Please let me know below. Um, but, you know, where is it? Where's the evidence for this? Um, where are their ancient sites? Because, you know, when he was doing the series, he went around some great places. I mean, um, got banned from filming at um, Serpent Mound in Ohio. Uh, which is a fascinating site. Um, and here in England, in the UK, we're, we're blessed with so many prehistoric sites. You know, um, we, we, we're very, very lucky, which I think are probably older than we think they are. A lot of sites supersede themselves. You know, I go into a lot of old churches, and some of those churches are built on Saxon foundations. And on those Saxon foundations, I went to a church last year where there's got Roman brickwork, you know, where you, from a nearby villa, use that as building tools to build the church. And what was on the church site before then, you know? Was it an ancient site? Look at Avebury, for example, and Windmill Hill, which is one of the earliest settlements uh, in the country, um, which is an incredible, incredible place. There's not much there to see now, but you think people were living there 5,000 years ago. Could be earlier. Could be earlier. There's a lot of questions to answer, and wouldn't it be great if we could actually find some evidence of this ancient civilization? Um, look at the Amazon, for example, which Graham's spoke, spoken about a hell of a lot. Um, the ancient the civilizations that existed in the Amazon were incredible. You know, it's only now becoming sort of more aware due to ground radar. Um, and obviously as the, as the deforestation continued, which is disgusting, they're the lungs of the earth, the Amazon. Um, so it makes me think, you know, my favourite place, as everyone knows, I go to Avebury a lot, the great uh, temple of Avebury in Wiltshire in England. I've been going over there, been going there for God, well over 30 years. Done a lot of... Um, dowsing, a lot of dowsing there, because my big question, I say it in a lot of my old videos, um, and I'm, I'm going off on a tangent now, but I talk about it a lot, and I, I, you know, I'd love to, love to know what Graham's take on this is. Um, why are these places built where they are? So even if we had an ancient civilization going around instructing other tribes and other gatherings of people to start rebuilding societies, so to speak, why would they particularly build something where it was? Now, I think once ancient men went off on their own and started getting this, this new information, um, they started building places like Avebury at a certain point. In Why build it there and not five miles down the road? Why do they build this great temple in the middle of the Wiltshire Downs? And Avebury itself is a huge complex, absolutely huge complex. You've got the main stone circle, it's the largest stone circle in the world, UNESCO World Heritage Site. You've got Silbury Hill, the largest man-made uh, prehistoric, prehistoric structure in Europe, which no one knows what it was there for. Um, uh, you've got West and East Kennet Long Barrows, uh, ancient uh, burial mounds. You've got Swallowhead Spring, you've got, as I said, Windmill Hill, uh, ancient settlement. It's always great, the sanctuary. Also, with Avebury, is the convergence. It was used to be the prehistoric capital of uh, the country. Okay, you have all these ancient trackways coming and converging to Avebury, the Ridgeway, the, what we call now the North Downs Way, the South Downs Way, the Iconfield Way, the Old Way, all these ancient tracks are now national, tra national trails that people can walk on. But they all converge to Avebury, not to Stonehenge, to Avebury, um, which I, I find absolutely fascinating. So what was on the site before Avebury, the modern, the recognised Avebury, um, was there before? What was on their site before? With Avery, a lot of it's been reconstructed and the stones which, which were felled have all been put back up in the 1930s by um, Alexander Keeler. Um, there's only one stone in the whole complex that sort of has not ever fallen down in, for, well, say, 5,000 years. But I think Avery's probably older. But going back to what I was talking about, why do they build them where they were? Now, something we've lost over the years is our connection with nature. I think it's also an excuse for a lot of modern illnesses. We're not grounded anymore. We don't feel the flow of energy. You know, and I, for dowsing for me is about uh, attracting and detecting earth energy currents, which are electromagnetic uh, fields of current that sort of uh, weave and contract, weave and contract, that go across the world. And a very uh, famous one, which was rediscovered by Hamish Miller and Paul Broadhurst back in the 1980s, chronicled in a great book called The Sun and the Serpent, was the Michael and Mary current. It's a straight, I mean, it's a ley line, it's a straight, I'm, I'm not a big lover of ley lines in general. But it's a straight alignment of sacred sites that goes from Cornwall uh, right up to the Norfolk coast. But actually, between going, weaving like a snake, 
hence the son of the serpent, weaving like a snake are two yin and yang, earth energy currents, male and female, the Mary and Michael, the goats cross the landscape and intersect at some of these points. Um, it goes through uh, St. Michael's Mount, it goes through Glastonbury Tor, this is just a couple by the way, uh, the hurlers at Bodmin Moor, obviously down to Avebury, uh, goes through the sanctuary, um, down to uh, near the obelisk in the centre of the circle, which you can detect quite easily, I've detected it many times, and then uh, goes off to Hopton Church and then off to the Norfolk coast. Um, and they're really powerful set energy centres, which makes me think, do you th is this why our ancients built these sites where they were um, they felt the energy it felt good it was very much a healing energy electromagnetic uh, energy that you can just pick up with a couple of copper rods anyone can do it anyone can do it i don't think there's anything that mystical about it to be honest with you um, that's why i think they were built why were churches built where they were back in, you know saxon churches as i said earlier were they built on earlier sites of religious worship that's passed down through the generations unwritten because they were going back into prehistory so nothing was written down with these things, you need to think outside the box. I think thinking outside the box is so important, you know. Of course, I love archaeology, I love history, I love reading about it, I love watching videos about it, you know. But it's great getting out in the field and trying to do some yourself. But you've got to think differently sometimes. There's nothing wrong with the accepted evidence. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that at all. Of course it's not. But just don't... Or, Always ask questions. I think it's all about always asking questions, which Graham's done, um, I think, very well in this series. I think it's a compelling series. I've watched it a couple of times now. Um, and I know we've got so much bad feedback from the archaeological and historian, historical uh, community, um, which I don't think is really fair. Um, he's been doing this a long time. You know, he's not like just made a theory looking at Google. He's gone out in the field. He's got his shoes wet. You know, he's got his hands wet and dirty. He's got out in the field and doing it. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. So let me know your thoughts. Um, that's my theory. I, I, I've always, my, my, as going back, my main question has always been why these ancient sites built where they were. What's, what's aesthetic about it? What's the energy like in those, in those places? Katepli Tepe, why was that built where it was? Not, I don't know, two miles down the road. There's so many ancient sites that, go, that defy modern explanations that I think it does need a new narrative sometimes to have a look at it. Because with archaeology, which is fantastic, of course, but we're dealing matter with matter. We need to look at other other ideas of why they were there, you know. And I do like the idea of the shaman with the plant medicines um, and these altered states of consciousness, which maybe is how um, ancient the ancients become what they would think spiritual or brought religion into their lives, you know, all from those times when they were actually doing altered states of consciousness, which could have been introduced by this ancient civilization, probably well before that, I would think, well before that. Um, and when did humans become self-aware? Well, we're saying maybe 150, 200,000 years ago. I think therefore I am. Um, but yes, I'd really like to know your thoughts. Um, if you like this video, please, you know, please like, subscribe. Please, as I say, please leave a comment below. Um, these are just my theories. I say, dismiss them if you wish. Um, that's what conversations are all about. It's differing opinions, isn't it? Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.